Welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel, where today we're looking at some of the communication methods used in coastal Alaska. I grew up on an island outside of Juneau and was able to visit that area again this summer. I've been doing a lot of videos lately on the scenery and history of southeast Alaska, but apparently people like this channel for satellite topics instead of nature. I've had a lot of questions about satellite and radio use in Alaska, and I actually did have a few projects in mind when we did the trip. Not all of them worked, but we did get to try out some interesting tech. This video is sponsored by Global Telesat and Orbital Satcom, who provided a SIM card for one of my vintage satellite phones. I'll get into that a little bit later in the video. For a lot of Southeast Alaska, cell phones are not the main communication method. With all the steep mountains, deep valleys, islands, and other interesting terrain, cell phones just don't work reliably outside of larger towns. Instead, people often use VHF marine radios to talk between boats and shore. These radios have a longer range than CB or FRS radios, and they've been around for a little bit longer, so they've become an important part of local culture. They're also an important safety device in case of emergencies. The U.S. Coast Guard maintains radio towers and repeaters on many mountaintops, and they can often triangulate a distress call between these radio sites. Even if the Coast Guard can't be reached directly, you can often call other boaters or nearby people for help in case of an emergency. The Coast Guard also broadcasts safety information, weather warnings, and informational messages on VHF channels 16 and 22. The Coast Guard has received a report of a blue 56 foot capsized scener Yankee made floating in position 58 tack 08 decimal 55 five north 135 tack 23 decimal 50 west there is a net attached to the vessel in the water with an orange and white buoy attached approximately 1 8 mile long floating along the beach all mariners are advised to keep a sharp lookout and transit the area with caution Break. Holcomb Bay Buoy 1 and Buoy 2, flight list numbers 23631 and 23632 have been reported as off station. 1114 local time, Alaska Southeast. The Coast Guard is unable to locate or establish communications with Coast Guard Hilo 6045. Again? The last known position was 57 TAC 47 decimal 8 north. 135 tech 15.5 west. All vessels in the vicinity are requested to keep a sharp lookout, assist if possible, and report all sightings to the Coast Guard. Break. National Weather Service broadcasts are also in or near the Marine VHF band, so you can listen to those with the same radios. It's wind up to 10 miles an hour. Chance of rain 70 percent. In addition to the radios on the boat, we brought along some handheld radios programmed for marine VHF so we could stay in touch from the beach. Some of the Coast Guard or government mountaintop antenna sites will have cell phone antennas as well as microwave links for landline phones between communities. These can often be blocked or disrupted by weather, terrain, ice, or just have malfunctions, so they are not always reliable. It turns out that not having reliable cell service can cause some other interesting issues. My phone has gone so out of signal range that it has decided it's December 29th. So, yeah, it just has completely decided it's a different month, different date, probably a different year. And this caused some ripple effects. Some of my apps no longer worked, and even my drone refused to work properly because the internal clock was then messed up. I've gotten spoiled living in the flatlands of the Midwest with constant cell service almost everywhere, and I never even considered some of those potential glitches until they started happening. Satellite communications have become a little more common around Alaska in recent years. Back in the 80s and 90s, satellite phones were really just a novelty for rich people, the kind of thing that a tech millionaire would have on their yacht. Buy 300 shares of Microsoft. Sell 200 shares of Apple. I'd like to thank Orbital Satcom Co. and Global Telesat for sponsoring this video by hooking me up with a SIM card for my 90s Iridium satellite phone. Because sometimes when you're out role playing as a 90s tech millionaire on your yacht, you need a 90s phone to stay in touch with family, friends, stockbrokers, whatever. We're actually using this to stay in touch. The particular spot that we're at right now has no cell phone coverage on any network. So the only way we can call home and check in with people to tell them we haven't sunk the boat yet is the 90s Iridium satellite phone. And it's been coming in real handy here on this trip. So this is a real fun thing to have. It's fun to play around with. And I would like to again thank 
uh, Orbital Satcom and Global Telesat for sponsoring this. I will throw links to their website down below in the description, uh, both to their US branch and their UK branch. I believe I have a UK phone number on this thing, although it works all over the world, whether or not you have cell phone coverage. So it's a really cool piece of gadgetry. Uh, even if the phone itself is from the 90s, it does still work and it's fun to play around with. I think our neighbor here might actually be a 90s tech millionaire. More and more people in Alaska are adopting Starlink for data and voice communications, especially off-grid residents, boaters, and folks who live outside of the major cities. They have two Starlink antennas. They have double the internet. However, Starlink is still somewhat experimental, and it's not as reliable as some of the older legacy systems. When we were in Alaska, we heard of a big Starlink outage that affected a lot of boaters and homes. Of course, it helps to give your friends the phone number ahead of time before you call them with your satellite phone, since these days, 99% of incoming calls are just spam, and nobody answers unknown numbers anymore. I tried to call my friend Carl from the Sawyer Glacier, but I forgot to give him the Iridium number, so every time I called him, he just ignored it. I did manage to get a hold of my dad because I had given him the number ahead of time, so I was able to call him on his birthday even though we were out in the middle of nowhere without cell phone service. Another radio gadget I played around with on this trip was the Hacker F1 Portapack. I've showed this before on the channel. It has a bunch of interesting apps built in and is kind of a standalone software-defined radio system. One app that I wanted to play with was called AIS, or Automatic Identification System. This is kind of like the boat version of ADSB for planes, and can show identity, position, course and speed, and other data for properly equipped boats. It was fun to play with this somewhere that had more AIS equipped boats, as opposed to back home on the Mississippi River, where just one or two vessels use it. Alright, this cruise ship finally showed up on AIS, that's the Discovery Princess. Registered in Bermuda, so they don't pay any taxes on that thing. Destination is Endicott Arm, but I think they just came out of Endicott Arm. No, that's definitely the one I'm seeing, so they have not updated their destination in the EAS system. I did also try tuning in the Hacker F1 to the NOAA and Meteor weather satellites. So today I'm trying to receive NOAA 19 with the Hacker F Porta Pack and uh, portable V dipole. And we're here in Alaska. We're at Funter Bay in southeast Alaska. We're staying on that boat. And we've got a pass coming up here in a minute, so I figured this is a good chance to try this out. Let's see if we can get NOAA 19 here. Yeah, here it comes. We're getting a signal. Well, it doesn't really look right, so I'm not 100% sure if this is actually working. Well, I think I'm getting something, but it's certainly not usable for weather forecasting. It's basically a useless image. So I'm trying another weather satellite capture, this time Meteor M23. I'm not seeing it on the Hack RF. I've got the V-dipole set up on the boat here. And uh, I tried Sat Dump, but it did not recognize the Hack RF. I tried SDR++, it will not run, it keeps crashing. So that's what I get for trying a brand new laptop without uh, testing all this beforehand. Nothing actually works, so don't know if we're going to get any satellite stuff here on the boat. All right, the fog is starting to get thicker, and we're going into it. So now we do want the radar on. We've had it on for icebergs. We're kind of out of the iceberg zone, but into the fog zone now. And we've also been watching for feed on the depth finder, but there is nothing on there. It is just dead flat, no fish, no feed, nothing happening. And this waterfall up here shows up as a red streak on the radar. That's kind of cool. I haven't used a modern radar like this, so I'm just used to single old phosphor green screen. Having it overlaid right on top of the chart and all these extra little icons and symbology, that's really cool. So this big flat one here, that doesn't even show up on the radar. It's too flat, it's too low to the water. We can see the taller ones, like this guy, is off over there. We're still trying to figure out some of the radar icons. We've got two little round circles off behind us. And uh, that one of them seems to correspond to this little boat. 
quite sure what those are indicating. It seems like it's indicating boat traffic and direction of travel, but it's not 100% reliable. There's a giant scary red blob on the radar, which I think corresponds to the cruise ship down there. Well, that's about all we've got for this one. I know this video was a little bit all over the place, but I did want to include some of the satellite and radio content relating to our Alaska trip, since that seems to be what a lot of people in the comments have been asking for. If you want to see more of our Alaska trip, check out the playlist of our Alaska 2025 trip. And if you're just here for the satellite and radio content, I have playlists for that as well. We do have more of both types of content coming up, so make sure to stay tuned for those. Thank you to everyone for watching, and we'll see you next time.